Starting with the Easter egg. Okay, we have the SUV version of the Tesla X doing an Easter egg if you are curious about what that means. Reprogram it. Really? Uh, well, you don't buy the car for the It's an add-on. He's at every e EV event that I go to uh, and uh, throughout the state. Um, and uh, he brings a lot of expertise in this space, goes all over the place nationally learning about what's happening with the alternative fuel world. So I'm going to pass the mic over to, to Ben to uh, bring us up to date on a few items. Ben? Thank you very much, Barry. Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for coming. What a beautiful day. Um, I think we've Lucked out. I've been to at least a couple of these over the last few years, and it seems like the weather is always fantastic. So, um, probably doesn't hurt that uh, you saw 
all the solar panel to gather electricity to charge these cars, and it's just a particularly um, fitting uh, day to be to be out here with everyone generating power uh, to power these uh, cars, which is something that um, speaking louder. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, as Barry said, my name is Ben Lake. Um, I am the state's clean cities coordinator. So. Uh, we're part of a national program run by the Department of Energy that uh, has been promoting alternative fuel vehicles as a way to reduce petroleum consumption for transportation for the last 25 years. Our coalition has been active in the state for the last 20 years, and uh, we actually just celebrated our 20th anniversary this year, uh, which we're particularly proud of. And we have been working on this, uh, trying to save gasoline and diesel uh, in cars um, long before electric vehicles were a viable option, but it's been particularly exciting the last few years since I took over to see how much the market has changed, uh, how many options are out there for people now who are interested in driving electric and reducing their fuel consumption, and uh, just the innovation that's happening right now and the energy, so to speak, that people are bringing to this. There are people from all walks of life who are embracing electric cars in a way that we never saw before. Uh, we've been working for years prior to this uh, on uh, mostly focusing on fleets. So uh, the folks who run big shipping fleets or municipal fleets, usually heavy duty vehicles, um, propane and natural gas are things that we've been pushing for school buses and for transit fleets and so forth. But uh, it's been really exciting to watch um, this passenger segment come in. So uh, instead of just looking at uh, big vehicles that uh, people we we'll use mostly for commercial purposes. When you talk about EVs for people, you can tell them, no, you can go to your regular auto dealer and you can buy one of these, or you can test drive one of these. And this is something that you can personally do to reduce the amount of fuel that you consume, uh, the amount of emissions that you're producing. Um, I think one of the main reasons why uh, people are excited about these in the state is because um, Maine is a particularly good place to drive an electric car. Um, just nationally, just about anywhere makes sense to drive an electric car in terms of um, electric vehicles are just so much more fuel efficient, energy efficient than internal combustion engines. They can convert almost all the energy that they have stored in their batteries to drive the car forward, whereas with your average internal combustion engine, you only get about 30 to 35 percent of all the energy that's in your gas tank is going towards moving that car forward. Almost all of it is reduced uh, or released as waste um, in terms of heat, in terms of noise. Uh, and so um, that's one of the main benefits of electric cars. They're just so much more efficient. But in Maine, they're particularly appealing because we have such a green grid here. Um, so much of our energy is produced by hydro or by biomass or other sources that don't produce much emissions. And so when you drive an electric vehicle in Maine, you are really um, benefiting the environment and really doing a lot to reduce your greenhouse gas footprint. One of the other reasons why uh, we push these cars and why we come to these events and why we support them is because um, transportation is the, now the single largest sector um, of all of you know, uh, residential buildings, commercial entities, manufacturing, all of that, even electrical generation. Transportation is now the single biggest um, emission source in our state uh, and nationally. Say that again, Ben? Transportation is now the single biggest source of emissions, both in our state and nationally. Uh, we surpassed electrical generation a few years ago, and transportation continues to go up. While there are relatively simple and easy things that people can do to weatherize their homes and switch over from you know, fuel oil to wood, wood pellets, or natural gas, or other forms of heating, um, transportation is the toughest nut to crack when it comes to reducing emissions. And electric vehicles are a major, major way that you can help address those growing emissions. Um, they are not the only solution, uh, and we can make a really big difference. Uh, there are other things that we can all do to help reduce emissions and save, um, save our petroleum for other better things. One of them is taking public transportation when you can, uh, riding your bike or walking, um, making choices about your businesses and about where you live that allow you to um, do things and recreate and shop and so forth that don't require getting into a car and commuting 30 miles or 40 miles. Obviously, uh, the way that our, um, our land use patterns are set up, and especially in a rural state like Maine, that can be a real challenge, which is why electric vehicles are such a powerful tool, but they're not the only silver bullet. And one of the things that we do in our host organization, which is the Greater Portland Council of Governments, 
is work on trying to find solutions that all come together. Yes, we recognize that electric vehicles are a very important part of how we address climate change, how we reduce our emissions, but they're only one part. And so um, I want people to recognize how important they are and how valuable it is that you're all here and excited about these. And yes, they are fun to drive and there's a lot of other reasons to, to be here and be supporting these, but there are other solutions that are necessary too. And we're all gonna need to work together on um, finding ways collectively to address them through cooperation. Um, so I'll get off my soapbox now. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'll say one other thing. Uh, we do have a, uh, we brought our Chevy Bolt, that white uh, Chevy Bolt over there. And one of the things that's unique about that car, I think, is that we have a three year lease on it and we got it specifically so that we could loan it out to people for a week at a time to really experience what it's like to drive one. It's great that you're all here and you're test driving the cars and taking them around the block and up and down 26, but if you want to get a real sense for what it's like to commute back and forth to work, what it's like to pick up your kids at school, what it's like to go shopping and have this thing on a day in, day out basis, um, that's why we have the car. We're particularly targeting folks like um, elected officials and um, folks in the current administration and state government and so forth, the kind of people who are probably going to be making policies that are going to affect electric vehicles. And we want to make sure that they have a really informed opinion about what it's like to drive these cars and how practical they are. They're not just like golf carts. And that's what we hear a lot um, from people. And they're just fun to drive. So if you are interested or you know anyone who might fit that category, uh, who might be interested and might benefit from some time with our car, please come find me. I've got business cards. I'd be happy to chat with you. So again, thank you very much for coming and look forward to the rest of the event. Thank you very much, Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, it's scary to think about transportation as now the single source of greenhouse gas emissions. The largest source. Uh, that's true. It's not the single. It's the largest source. And uh, it's great to have a, an answer to that by looking at this technology. Uh, and increasingly, it's a superior answer. So I wanted to just uh, introduce Sophie Janeway, who is the uh, Climate Change and Clean Energy Outreach Coordinator for the Natural Resources Council of Maine, one of the sponsors of this event. Uh, NRCM has been um, a stalwart supporter of electric vehicle technology in the state. They're always at the state house. They're always helping organize these events. They have, we have a lot of reasons to feel uh, proud that we have such a dedicated uh, or, uh, environmental organization looking out for Mainers and helping educate all of us. So I want to I want to welcome Sophie to say a few words on behalf of NRCM. Thanks, Barry. Can people hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to try and talk loud enough. My, my name is Sophie Janeway. Uh, I work at the Natural Resources Council of Maine. How many folks here uh, are familiar with or have heard of NRCM before? Awesome. That's great. Well, for those of you who haven't heard of us before, we are the state's leading environmental advocacy organization. We work in Augusta, around the state, um, both to empower Maine people and to protect Maine's environment and all the special places that we love and hold so near and dear. Um, but a big part of what I do is working on climate change and clean energy policy uh, and clean transportation is a huge part of that. Um, anybody who's turned on the news today, really any day, has probably seen the recent impacts of how climate change is impacting Maine um, and how it's impacting our entire state and our entire country, um, from what's happening in Florence uh, to increased rates of Lyme disease around the state. The impacts of climate change, not to get too depressing, are super pervasive. Um, and as Barry and Ben both said, um, transportation pollution from our cars and trucks is our largest contributing source to climate change. Uh, and so these electric vehicles, which are really fun to drive and getting the technology is advancing all the time are also a really great way that we are continuing to reduce climate change pollution. Um, and NRCM recently did a survey. Uh, we have some results over there if you're interested in learning a little bit more about it or you can come and ask me. Um, but we surveyed 1,300 people in the state of Maine who are registered electric vehicle owners. Um, this number has more than doubled from what it was a few years ago when we did our first survey of all the electric vehicle owners in Maine. Um, and twice as many electric vehicles were sold in 2017 as in 2014. Um, Woohoo! Yeah, that's right! 
<laughs> and that is also in large part thanks to Paris Autobahn, who's <laughs> doing their part up here to make that happen. Um, but there, one of the most interesting things that we found from the survey um, is that you know people from across the state of Maine are driving electric vehicles, whether you're up in Presque Isle or you're down in Portland or you're in Norway or you're over in Bethel or you're down